Hi everyone, today I'm joined with Harry Mara, MD and CEO of Bangalore International Airport. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Jessica. It's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. So today we'll be discussing Terminal 2. Could you tell me a little bit about the four pillars that the terminal is designed and built on and how these elevate the customer experience? Thank you, Jessica. Yes. Um, you know, building a new terminal is always a is a is a big challenge because one's got to decide what it's going to look like and how it's going to function. Um, and one of the things that we're acutely aware of is the facts fact that airports are gateways to a city or region, and they're easily the calling card of the city and uh, create uh, the the important first and often the lasting impression of the city. So uh, when we um, started on the idea of expanding Bangalore Airport. I mean, we've seen some incredible growth in, in Bangalore over the last few years. We started this program in 2016. And when we sat down um, on deciding what the terminal should look like, we knew that we had to build a terminal that would con to carry forward and continue all the good practices of the old terminal. Uh, we were known for our efficiency, uh, the service excellence, uh, the the uh, uh, customer focus and things like that. So we had to carry that forward while also having to create a deep connect with the city. So in order to do that, we picked uh, four guiding principles, or as you referred to them just now as the four pillars that we believe reflected our city in one form or the other. The central theme in our case was to build an airport uh, that is, um, uh, you know, a, 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 an airport or a terminal in a garden. And it, it was meant as a dedication to the garden city of India. Bangalore, for those of you who didn't know, was always known as the garden city of India. And not many gardens that you see today in Bangalore, but I think the airport must reflect what the, the city always stood for. Uh, and the terminal in the garden concept was meant to make uh, the travel through the airport seem like a walk in the park, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we always wanted. Um, uh, Bangalore is uh, also known as the technology capital of the country. It's known as the Silicon Valley of India. Um, it is also uh, has the moniker of being the uh, startup capital of India and so on and so forth. So technologies is something that the airport or the terminal had to naturally uh, reflect. And in order to reflect this identity, we ensured that the best of technology was incorporated into design, construction and operations of uh, Terminal 2, which made uh, technology really the second pillar. Um, and of course, um, the the uh, role of technology was not just to improve passenger experience, but uh, by making travel seamless and intuitive, but uh, also improve, for instance, efficiency and to enhance our ability to manage this complex and increasingly large uh, asset. Um, thirdly, Bangalore is also known for its rich uh, heritage of art and culture, um, and the design focuses on establishing a showcase of, let's say, the the rich art and culture of, of the region, making that the third pillar. And of course, uh, I'm sure everybody will agree with me that the fourth pillar, without which any development is incomplete, uh, and what already has been uh, a part of the core ethos of uh, BIL from inception, is uh, in ensuring that sustainability was woven into the fabric of our entire project. So in summary, uh, really four pillars, which is uh, terminal in the garden, uh, technology, sustainability and art and culture. That's wonderful. Thank you. That's that gives us a really nice um, introduction to what we're going to be speaking about. So we'll we'll delve into a few of those bits later. Could you um, explain a little bit about how you strike a balance between culture and technology or while enhancing customer experience? Actually, it's a very interesting question because um, it, everything that we do at the terminal or, or at the airport has got to have customer experience and uh, customers' uh, journey at the core of everything. So at the core of terminal design, at the core of everything that we do at, at the airport is the experience of the customer. So, um, and I'll come back to what are the key elements that we've helped to support that, that uh, journey. But we start with basically ensuring that the layout of the terminal, the passenger flow, uh, the passenger processing functions, how they've been planned and laid out, have all been done to deliver a smooth, seamless, and sort of intuitive experience. Uh, with the use of technology um, and, and uh, you know, technology, like I mentioned, has been woven into the design. So using technology like DigiArthra, in case you haven't heard of it, is India's biometric based travel program, uh, deployment of uh, cutting edge uh, aviation technology such as self backdrop units or smart security lanes, um, the latest baggage handling system, et cetera, et cetera, and supported by a digital travel concierge 
uh, that is expected to simplify the travel experience for the passenger. All of this is meant to make sure that the experience through the airport is like a walk in the park. With, uh, uh, and I keep repeating that walk in the park bit. With passenger processing getting uh, more simplified and hassle-free, uh, it's been our conviction, and uh, a bit controversial to say so, it's been our conviction that the travel through the airport can actually become the most memorable part of a passenger's travel journey from his origin destination. And I think it can even be better than the experience you can curate in a metal tube 35,000 feet above sea level. I think on the uh, on terra firma, uh, I think we have better chance of curating amazing experiences. So in addition, in addition to enabling passenger uh, uh, journey, uh, our vision has always been to curate and deliver wonderful micro experiences that lead to a memorable macro experience. Uh, therefore, the experience that we wanted our customers to have are centered around two core pillars, which is what you referred to a, a minute ago in terms of both gardens and art and whether they sort of complement each other. I think they complement each other splendidly. Uh, speaking about gardens, I mean, you heard of gardens in a terminal, but here's a terminal that's built <laughs> within vast landscapes of uh, gardens. Uh, so it's not just uh, it's not just in the terminal, even as you're driving down this sort of virtuous uh, greenery along the main access road, hanging gardens within the uh, terminal building itself. A forest belt ensconces the terminal building, and there are like several square meters of green walls. Every step is meant to be a treat for uh, sore eyes. And of course, you know what we started, uh, Jessica, as, as a terminal in the garden soon grew in ambition and scale and became a terminal in a biodiversity hotspot. And today in the campus, we have over 3,600 species of plants, which is more than any other man-made development in India. Um, and, and of course, in keeping with our deeply entrenched thinking on, on sustainable development, we also have adopted 180 rare, endangered, and threatened species with a promise to provide them a safe sanctuary at the airport. And of course, uh, complementing the garden theme, and you, you, know, you asked me whether they sort of uh, clash with each other, I think it complements it beautifully because they come together in a very nice manner, is the art program at the terminal. So, a, a terminal really is a is a place to find all human emotions on 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 its many splendor display. So uh, a reflection of human emotions forms forms the core focus of our artworks. So what we picked as as the uh, theme that unites all the commissioned artworks for Terminal Two is a theme called Navrasa, which is an Indian term for nine emotions. Um, the artworks are you know so they're placed across the passenger journey at various points in the terminal, and they are meant to serve as beacons as the passenger travels through, um, uh, encouraging and allowing passengers to pause, reflect, and enjoy. Slow down, smell the roses, really. Uh, and, and they reflect the, uh, the heritage, culture, and the lived creative capital of the uh, state, as well as the broader Indian ethos. And last but not the least, our retail food and beverage offering sort of supports these experiences by or, or, you know, sort of offering a smorgasbord of uh, unique curated offerings, several of which are in an Indian airport for the very, very first time. Wow, that's that's fantastic. And I, I see why you went with walk in a park instead of walk in a biodiversity hotspot. <laughs> I think it rolls <laughs> off the tongue slightly easier. Slightly but that's easier, really, that's really interesting. And it is, it's such a striking terminal. It is absolutely beautiful. Just um, returning to the what you mentioned about technology, you mentioned DigiArtra and obviously biometrics, sort of self-bag drops. How are you finding technologies making the process more efficient in the airport? So, um, you know, as we've all seen in, in life, um, technology has become probably the biggest enabler of our times, right? And in, in keeping with the, the global trend that we're seeing of uh, uh, technology being ubiquitous and uh, all pervasive. Uh, even at, at the airport, what we've done is that we've not used technology only for enhancing the seamless journeys of passengers, but also for improving the efficiency of a better asset management and so on. So we've incorporated uh, uh, technology right through all aspects of the development, uh, design, uh, construction and operations of the terminal. So from, you know, the design is based on creating a digital twin using BIM, building information modeling. And uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, this is the largest uh, infrastructure project of its kind globally that has used uh, BIM uh, for 
design. So really a digital twin has, was created even before the construction began and that digital twin was used for, uh, you know, for, for the bids, for constructing the terminal, for uh, managing the construction during the construction process itself and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, from the operational standpoint, I mentioned already Digiatra. So Digiatra, for those who are not familiar, uses one single biometric token. In our case, the facial biometrics are the single token that we've adopted for uh, travel, uh, our travel program. So linked to your facial biometrics are both the travel credentials as well as the, uh, the uh, identity credentials of the passenger, which means that all you need to do is turn up at the airport with your face and uh, our cameras detect uh, that your travel credentials and your identity credentials have been verified and you just walk through and the gates open up so that you can walk through without producing documents and things like that. Uh, we've also taken great care to ensure that the latest technology in the world of aviation is there. Uh, so all the self-checking kiosks, self-backdrop units, uh, uh, even these, of course, are also um, uh, going to be fitted with biometrics. At the moment, not yet, but will be fit, uh, fitted with facial biometrics, which means even in a self-backdrop, you just come and show up and stand in front of it. Uh, it picks up your credentials and it, all you need to input is the number of pieces of baggage and rest is all taken care of. Right. And um, uh, of course, the baggage handling system that we have had, with, uh, we've uh, deployed with baggage tracking, all of this uh, makes uh, travel that much more uh, safer and gives a lot of reassurance to the passenger that he's in, he's in uh, good hands. We're also just launching our digital platform, or uh, at least the, the first version of it is already out, but not with it's not as feature rich as, as we want it to be. And we'll eventually get there in, in the next six months. But the digital platform that we're launching will serve as a digital travel concierge. And it, it, it will offer travel assistance and solutions to passenger, along with a plethora of services and e-commerce to enhance the experience while, while traveling. So really, if you have the digital travel concierge with you, travel becomes really, really simple. Uh, uh, incidentally, just uh, uh, on, a, on a more, uh, uh, as, as a fun fact, we also hold the distinction of being the first terminal that is present on the metaverse. Uh, so you, <laughs> you can experience the airport virtually. So today, uh, Bangalore Airport Metaverse, it's not feature rich in the sense that many of the things that you can, uh, um, th that we want to eventually offer is not yet there. For instance, we, you can attend events, check in on your, uh, check in uh, into your flight, shop, uh -huh. have goods delivered home and things like that. But we haven't really built all those features. But what you can do today is experience the terminal like you're actually standing in the middle of it. Uh, by getting onto the metaverse, the Bangalore airport uh, at, at the metaverse, Terminal 2 at the metaverse. So uh, it's under development as we speak, and we're, we're excited about launching that. That sounds really exciting. So it's really great to hear that you're sort of integrating technology, not just to improve the basics, so sort of bag drop and, and everything, but really sort of looking forward as well. And you sound very ahead of ahead of um, the time with that. Obviously, adoption in the metaverse is still pretty um, pretty early. That's exciting. So we, you mentioned a bit earlier about Bangalore being a tech hub, and I think you said the Silicon Valley of India. Is technology well received in the region? And do you have to try and establish a balance between technology and automation on one hand and human in interaction on the other hand? Uh, very interesting question. Um, and I get asked this question quite often and, and what many people miss is that technology is received and adopted in India better than most people would imagine. I'm not sure, Jessica, whether you know that India has an incredible smartphone penetration. India has more than 600 million people who use a smartphone, which is the, more than the population of most countries around the world. And when you combine this with the quantum leap India has made in the area of telecom services, which offers data at an incredibly low cost. India is also one of the highest per capita consumers of data in the world. Wow. And on top of that, uh, with over 70 billion digital payment transactions a year, India is not just the global leader, but accounts for over 40% of the global <laughs> digital payments. Wow. <laughs> So actually, uh, suddenly that changes the whole picture. And this means that you, India is uniquely positioned at this moment. And Bangalore in particular as the tech capital of the country with a youthful population, technology adoption is likely to happen at a much faster pace than most parts of the world is my argument, right? And, and therefore, 
uh, we're betting big on technology. Uh, by the way, uh, more than 60% of Bangalore, 65% of Bangalore's population is below the age of 35. All youngsters using technology, and we believe, therefore, that technology at the airport will help them to uh, travel that much uh, comfortably and that much more faster. Having said that, the second part of your question is even more interesting. What, are, what happens to uh, human in interface? Uh, I must say the principle that we like to espouse and embody in our service culture is high tech and high touch. So while technologies, and, and we want to make, make that distinction very clear, technology is only an enabler. And in our view is not meant to eliminate or replace human touch. Uh, so while technology simplifies processes, um, and automates most of the routine tasks, and that's what technology should be used for, automating the routine tasks. It effectively also frees up time for human interaction. And I believe that our service staff will now have a better opportunity and more time to serve our customers well, uh, instead of being uh, focused on, on managing routine tasks, uh, they will have actually an opportunity to serve our customers well with an even higher level of obsession than we had earlier. That's That's our view on this. That's wonderful. I guess the benefit of automating some processes is that the people who would like to can do that and that actually frees up more time for a sort of enhanced experience for the people who would like that human human interaction. Precisely. Great. So just you you've already touched on it a little bit, but could you tell me a little bit more about the sustainability side of the terminal? How have you been ensuring a low carbon footprint and how does the design take sustainability into account? Well, this is a this is a question and a subject that's very very close to my heart, um, and I think uh, for good reason. And I, uh, I think the whole world uh, should feel the same at this point of time. Um, aviation world specifically has got challenged off late, as you know, with uh, a lot of youngsters demanding a sense of responsibility from us, so that it, you know they they feel more comfortable taking flights. Uh, and I think it's it's our common uh, collective responsibility to make sure in the development that we do that we offer to the, the, the population at large a more responsible way to travel across the world uh, on aviation. So as I mentioned a, a few minutes ago, sustainable development has been a core ethos at uh, Bangalore Airport right from inception. One of the things that's not well known at this point of time, Jessica, is that across the 4,000 acre campus, uh, the two runway system, two terminals with multiple buildings, so many businesses running, we are powered 100% by renewable energy. So we don't use any fossil fuels across the campus. And when the airport was established in this particular area of Bangalore, which is not Bangalore, uh, 15 years ago, um, it was the questions were raised as to how the airport could be established in what is already a water scarce and a rain shadow area of Bangalore. And with our efforts over the last 15 years, uh, it, it's a matter of great delight and pride for all of us at Bangalore that we have converted a water scarce region into a water surplus region. We've been certified water positive last year with an index of 1.37, which means for every liter of water that we consume, we conserve, uh, harvest, and reuse 1.37 liters of water. Uh, so sustainability is woven into everything that we do already. So in designing Terminal 2, we had to be very careful that we had to, um, uh, uh, you know, adopt the best in class practices, which only improve and enhance we, what we've already done. And as a result, therefore, I'm actually very pleased to tell you that we've become the first airport terminal in Asia and the largest airport terminal in the world to be LEED Platinum pre-certified for a new terminal development, the very first one. So this is, this is a matter of great pride for us because that's a validation of our efforts. So Terminal 2 has been uh, built predominantly using natural materials. Of course, we can't do it with it steel and uh, glass. It cannot be eliminated, but we use, we use a lot, lot, lot of natural materials like natural bamboo, a lot of natural exposed brickwork, a lantana, a stone and granite from uh, nearby quarries so that uh, transportation costs are reduced and so on and so forth. Um, we've got massive skylights for two reasons. One, of course, is because of there's a lot of plants, uh, over yeah. 650,000 plants inside the terminal. They need this uh, natural light, but that also results in reducing the need for artificial lighting. So we don't need to switch on a single light during the day uh, in the terminal. 
uh, as a result of that, uh, this results in 24.9% energy savings uh, at the uh, at this terminal. Uh, rainwater harvesting is a big part of the program with six major rainwater fed ponds with a holding capacity of 413 million liters. Uh, and that caters to the airport requirement. So we use that water. And as a result, uh, the water consumption is we are water neutral from that perspective. Um, uh, there is a natural system for uh, uh, removing the pollutants from the water and keeping it clean. They're all part of the integral part of the long term sustainability plan. Um, we've also looked at in, indoor air quality in the aftermath of COVID. Of course, this was very important that indoor air quality had to be focused on. So using systems like entryway systems, uh, interior cross-contamination prevention, um, uh, 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 using treated reverse osmosis water for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems, all that is part of improving also the indoor air quality. So going forward, the, uh, you know, the other big target in front of us, which I think is is the last goal in our books as far as sustainability is concerned, is that our uh, um, integrated solid waste management plant will be commissioned by December. Um, and uh, this will ensure that there will be zero charge to uh, zero um, uh, discharge to landfill, which means there'll be no waste that will leave this uh, this compound. So that I think will be the next big step. Wow, that's all incredibly impressive. And I imagine part of, as you said, it's, it's something that can't and shouldn't be ignored is sustainability. And I guess as you're sort of making this terminal, you're future proofing it as well, because we're only going to see regulations get tougher. Absolutely. That's that's really exciting. And another another thing that has been spoken about is that there's a slight misconception that sustainability practices will be a complete drain on the business side and of the sort of finance aspect but as you were saying sort of you you have the the light um entering the terminal which saves on electricity and these sort of it's not necessarily all just a drain on um on the money it can actually be optimizing your finances as well in fact uh, um, another point to the contrary is the fact that um you know, using solar, uh, solar costs have come down so dramatically now that at least in India, solar power is about 50% the price of regular conventional energy. Wow. Why would you even use conventional energy? I mean, it's just a no brainer in that sense. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for that. So just, just looking um, towards Aviation Festival Asia now, what are you most looking forward to at the event? Well, um, for me, it's, it's been a long time since I actually attended an aviation event. I must say, uh, I have uh, stayed away from all events for over a year and a half or two, uh, basically because I, I my my mind was focused on delivering this terminal and we have to do that on time. And in the midst of COVID, in any case, it wasn't really possible. So I'm really excited to be here because uh, uh, I, I look forward to a meeting with uh, several leaders in the space uh, figuring out what they're thinking about and what are their priorities and what are their challenges that they are dealing with in, in, in other parts of aviation, other parts of the globe and so on and so forth. Um, most importantly, um, you, what do people think as to what the future of aviation is going to be? I think this is, this is going to be an interesting topic of discussion as well. Um, so uh, I'm actually very eagerly looking forward to this, uh, this upcoming event. That's fantastic. And we're we're really looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much for joining me today and taking the time. Thank you, Jessica, for having me uh, here. And it was a great interview. Thank you so much.